Rub up your engines! Now here we have our friend who comes by with his new car. It's a 2022 Acura TLX Type S. He did have to pay MSRP because they only made like 330 of them last year, but he's the one that brought the Honda Pilot that he got at a salvage auction, but the frame wasn't bent. He decided to get rid of that. He actually made $30,000 on a deal because the frame was never bent. He sold it to CarMax for 30 grand more than he paid. So he went out and bought this new because he wanted something sporty. Now knowing this guy, six months from now, he'll have something else probably too, and he'll make money on this probably because if the price keeps going up when he paid msrp he could probably make a few grand selling it then but he wanted to get an interesting car and it's a very interesting car it's the turbo type s now it's got the nsx wheels the very fancy wheels we're talking high technology now listen to the exhaust you're gonna have the comfort sound a nice conservative tone but when you go into sport <laughs> And now here's Sport Plus. Now he's a conservative driver. I would have rubbed the crap out of it and made more noise. But like the BMW I tried out a couple years ago, it's got baffles in there that can open up. So if you really want to rev it up, you can get popping. You heard a little popping, but you can really make these things pop. He doesn't want to. It is a more conservative system, but being made from Honda, believe me, it works. They know what they're doing. They run fine. They're not having problems with them. And you can play if you want it quiet, quiet. You want it louder, you can make it louder. We'll look under the hood, and when we drive it, you'll hear more noise because it's got a rev limiter when you just sit. When we drive it, he can rev it and it won't rev limit and you'll hear it popping but what's under the hood is what this thing's all about it's a v6 engine it puts out 355 horsepower now this isn't an engine that's shared with the odyssey or with the accord it's an engine that they're only using this now they're going to put it in the mdx this year they say but it is designed pretty much from scratch and it's a phenomenal engine really got this ugly beauty cover get it out of the way throw it over there look at that now there is a marvel of engineering the overhead cams and sure it's an electrician's nightmare but honda knows what they're doing <laughs> all these sensors do quite a bit of things knowing hondas they probably won't have any problems at all as long as you stay above water the turbo look what's above it heat shield they don't want to blister the paint that would be sacrilegious now sure the battery's hidden away but you know you got a nice post here you ever have to jump start it you can just put positive here, negative anywhere over here, and it'll jump start easy, if you ever have to. Now check out the headlights. You get in the wreck with one of these, you think headlights are expensive on other cars? These babies are about 4000 bucks a piece, so <laughs> make sure you got insurance. Now you can see, these are very low profile tires. There, there's the sidewall. It isn't very big. And he did hit a Rhode Island pothole. So to fix the tire that went flat, towing and everything cost him 415 bucks. These are low profile tires. They're not made for potholes. They're made for really nice driving and cornering. So stay away from the potholes. So he bought tire insurance, cost him 20 bucks a month. And he says now he thinks it's more because they keep paying for so many tires. I always laugh when people started buying tire and wheel insurance. When I was in Houston, it was a big deal because these tire stores, they'd sell the fancy rims and the fancy tires. Some of these things would be three, four grand per car, right? And they were kids. Do kids have money? No, but they got a monthly payment and the insurance would be in a monthly payment. And the guys who ran the store loved it because every time the kids wrecked a tire and wheel, the insurance company paid them to put new ones on and there was no risk. Now in that case, you didn't have a choice. If you were leasing the wheels, which these guys did, they didn't have enough money to buy them. They only lease the wheels and the insurance is part of it so that if it does get wrecked, they're not out. They actually loved it when they wrecked because they made more money selling more tires and wheels. So if you're thinking about a car like this, you might look into that $20 a month tire insurance. It's probably worth it. Now that policy he said is at Allstate, and interest enough to cover the wheels too. So you can see where it's been nicked here. They're gonna fix it for free under the policy. Now he informed me that you can't even get these wheels. You gotta get them fixed. They don't sell them at Honda. Somebody offered him a couple of grand for them. He said, no, he likes it on the car. Getting the $20 a month insurance would definitely be worth it. Now the front are full Brembo's. They're massive brakes, you can see. And I kind of agree with the design. You can see they're not drilled and slotted. They're vented in the middle. You might wonder why. Okay, numero uno. 
It's not made as a race car. It's fast, but it wasn't made as a race car. You get drilled and slotted rotors, they make noise. So, you get a luxury car like this, you don't want drilled rotors and slotted rotors because they make a lot of noise. You want to be a nut and put on ones, go ahead, but you might not like the noise that you're going to get. And where was it made? It was made in Marysville, Ohio. It doesn't say that. It just says that Honda development, but believe me, it was made in Ohio. But that's Honda's big plant. I've had a personal tour of that years ago, and it's phenomenal, the stuff that they do there. They're right next to the giant proving grounds that they took over. So believe me, they test these things out, and they're well made. They're only making 330 of them a year. It's not exactly mass produced. You don't like peeling Honda paint, which they had problems with this. This is five layer of pearlescent paint. They don't want it to fade on their flagship. But he did say, he thought they cheaped out on the rear brakes because they're not Brembo's, they're just painted red. But really, on my motorcycles, I don't even use the rear brakes. I only use the front brakes. The rear brakes are more for stability, for staying straight when you're stopping. There's not that much brake apart. You can see they're a lot smaller too. So I would moan about that, you know. He puts the seat back. Only really skinny people can sit behind him. I could get three fingers barely behind there. Let's just say he only carries skinny supermodels in the back seat. Okay, the car was 55 grand, but they kind of cheaped out. Let's check the trunk. First, if you get a flat, there's a trunk button. Well, there's a button over here. Aha! It doesn't come with a spare tire. All that money paid, he had to pay 300 or something bucks for an extra spare tire. So he didn't have a spare tire. Instead, they gave him this. It's an air pump that's got sealant goo in it. Now, even if he wanted a spare now, they're on back order and take weeks to get it. But believe it or not, they wanted 200 bucks to install the spare tire because they said, well, they got to remove this and put another one on. The Japanese and Honda and Acura found out the dealers were charging that. They probably slapped them in the face because they'd see that as an insult. But of course, the Americans, they just want to make money and pile money on money. If you remember the story I did the other day, there was a guy in the United States that went to buy a certified pre-owned car. And they said it's certified pre-owned. So I went and looked, they liked the car. And then they told them, well, you know, we have to add a thousand dollars on the price of the car because it's certified pre-owned. I'd never heard that one before, but I mean, $200 to do this and throw a spare tire inside. And it's kind of close to that. He went to various dealers because the first one he went to wanted 15 grand over MSRP. So he ended up paying MSRP, but people are paying that kind of money to get their hands on cars. It's kind of crazy. So I imagine six months from now, the next time he comes by when I'm here, he'll probably have another car and he'll probably have made four or five grand or maybe even more selling this thing on. He's already found used versions of these. They're selling for 65 grand used. Since he paid 55 and he's only got a whopping like 600 miles on it now, he could certainly sell the thing and make a profit. That's what this guy does. Now, if you really want to do something like that, it's doable if you're sharp and you know how to deal with the business. Most people are just throwing their money away, contrary to the past history, of course with this crazy price. So many cars are going for such high dollars. You can get away with things like this. There's no saying how long it'll happen with hyperinflation on its way in the United States. Who knows, it might become a way of life in the future. And interesting enough, the radar cruise control that can read lines, it's looking through here, but that's just the cover. The actual electronics are back in there, which is a smart thing. The bells are toiling for me, I guess. Maybe it's all over. The way this thing is set up, you don't have to buy the whole system, just a stupid little fiberglass shield on it. A better design. If they're going to make only 330 of these cars in a year, they're going to make them right, you know, because it's not a profit motive there. Well, how much profit can they make? They only have 330 of them. It's more an exercise in engineering to see what they can make. So let's take it for a ride and see what it does. And now we're going to start it up and put it in Sports Plus mode, Sport for the engine, then you put on Sport for the transmission, they're separate controls. Now here we go on the rough roads of Rhode Island. You can see, hey, we're hitting some big bumps and it's not bad. For as bumpy as this road is, as fast as this car is. So here we go out on the road and we'll give it a little gas. Yes! What a sound. <laughs> hey, this thing is as much fun to drive as a Civic Type R, if you ask me. This thing is just insane acceleration. Watch this. There it goes. Whee! But we gotta slow down because my street's the next one. But do the brakes work? Let's see. Oh man, those brakes work like no tomorrow. <laughs> That's no problem. We're headed to the ocean. If you don't like people whacking into your mirrors, you lock the car. 
No more coming back to your car and finding out that part of your door is gone. So you want a luxury sedan. Hey, you got 55 grand, burn a hole in your pocket. You'll probably never get one now for 55 grand. He's a Wheeler dealer, so he did. And like I say, he'll probably sell it and make five or $10,000 and come with something else. For a sedan that's like this with that engine, they only made 330 of them last year. It impressed me i gotta say it's an impressive car the only thing that isn't impressive is the gas mileage now he drove it conservatively coming here and he got 17 and a half usually he gets about 16 and he's a conservative driver he doesn't drive like a maniac i was the one driving a car here he's a very conservative driver if i drove this car i would probably get five or six miles a gallon because in the shelby cobra that was rated at 14 i got three so you want a four-door sedan that's got some oh, rather amazing car because they're not going mass market they only make a few hundred of them what the heck it's technology that honda can do the own acura you did a pretty good job on this I i'm impressed you got 55 grand and you can find one buy it like him you get tired of it you could make some money on a deal <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell. 